So far in this tutorial, we've set up a Unity environment with a rigged character and created a couple of end effectors to be used with a two-bone IK system for the legs. To move the end effectors such that they simulate a walk cycle, we're going to now program them using curves. As we've previously discussed, the movement of the human body can be graphed as curves. The values of these curves provide X, Y, and Z values for the rig's joints transforms, that is, their rotations, scales, and positions. Animations that work with forward kinematics, that is, animations that are actually created by a human with an animation package, tend to focus on the rotation and scale and how they change over time. You can see in this example I've pulled up on the screen in the Unity animation window, an animation that's on this particular character that I got from Mixamo. Now, you don't have to worry about this right now. This is just for illustration purposes. Though, if you are particularly interested in forward kinematics and baked animations and using this animation system in Unity, I do have a course for that. And you'll also be able to use this particular code here on the screen to get a discount from my h3dlearn.com website. Now, what I want to show you is if we have a look at the different values through this list in the animation tab, you can see that most of the changes are happening to the rotation and the scale. Because if you think of the human body, to move anything, we are, well, I guess not scaling, but we're rotating and we're rotating our joints. So our joints rotate constantly through time and that sort of facilitates our animation. The only thing that you can actually see here that is moving in this model is the position. And the position is used to actually move the character forward. So if we have a look at the Z position for this particular character, you can see that over time, so this is time or frames as we're going across the top here, that the Z value or the forward direction of the character is actually increasing from 0 to about 1.3. And if we scrub along the top of this animation course, you can see how his forward position is actually changing, which is him moving this way. Now, more importantly and more interestingly is if we go back down to our Y value here that I had for rotation, we've actually got an example of a curve. And so that you can see the rotation of the left leg as we go through the different keyframes changes. So the rotation goes up to a specific point, which would be its maximum rotation for that joint. And then it comes down again back to pretty much its starting position. Now, the way that these curves work is that they are seamless. So if I just zoom out here, you'll see that here's our curve that has been created. The starting and the ending points are exactly the same, such that you can then put multiple of these curves together. And you'll see that forever and a day, we can keep our model moving along with just one simple curve and then replicating it over time. Okay, so what we're actually interested in is figuring out how we can animate, or I should say code the position of these end effectors so that it gives you the look of walking. So let's just bring this foot back to kind of there. When we walk, okay, our foot is kind of going like that, but it's also going up and down. Unlike the forward kinematics animation, which uses rotations, for this, we're actually needing to move the position of the end effector for each foot. Okay, so that's our left foot target and our right foot target. Now, what I've done to sort of illustrate the movement, even though it might be a little bit obvious, is I've put together another Unity program. Let's just open this up here. Now, this is just uh, Steve, again, walking on the spot with a very exaggerated animation. And that's so that we can sort of have a look at the way an end effector should work. So you can see that I've attached a sphere to his foot, and I'm actually using a Ford kinematic animation here. But what I've also done is to that sphere, I have attached a little script and that script prints out the position of itself um, throughout 
time. So I'll quickly show you that script. I'm not going to go over it, but in case you're sort of interested in what it says, here it is here. Really quick script that just prints out to a file that's going to go into your asset folder. The, the time, comma, the X position, the Y position, and the Z position all separated by commas. So then we can open up that file in Excel. Now, what do we get? When we open up in Excel, well, not surprisingly, we end up with the curves for each of the axes of that sphere. So we've got our X, our Y, and our Z. What I'm particularly interested in is the Z movement of the sphere. So that's the forward movement of the sphere. And these charts, which I took from the data here that I've plucked out of that, of Unity, uh, you can see that over time, this is time going this way. The position of the sphere starting here goes one direction and then it goes another direction and then it goes in one direction and then another direction. And that's what your foot does when you're walking. If you consider that you're kind of walking on the spot, your foot goes forward and then it goes back and then it goes forward and then back around your zero position. OK, so your zero position is, let's say, your hip position so your foot is kind of swaying back and forward in front and behind in front and behind and with the y you can see the curve here okay it's actually going from the ground okay which is like zero along here and the foot is actually not doing much there's a little bit of interest in there and then it lifts up and then it comes down and then it lifts up and then it's come down. This is you picking your foot up off the ground, lifting and bending your knee and then putting it back down again. So these are over time. If we were to take these and I'll see if I can actually squash these down and condense them so that time kind of disappears, we can get an idea of what happens to those values that we need to create. So for the Z movement of the end effector, we're going to basically be ping ponging. So we're going down, up, down, up, down, up. So that sort of action. For the Y, it's not really that much different. So if we come back in here, instead of sort of ping-ponging around a zero point, we're actually starting at zero and we're going up and then back to zero and then up and back to zero. Now, this is uh, two lots of curves you can see in there. So kind of disregard the second half of this data. It's just how long I kept the data generating for. And you can see you get two identical curves. The X, it would be side to side swaying of the foot. We're not going to bother with that for now. We're not even actually going to use this data. We're just using this as sort of a guideline of how our animation curves should act. Right, before we end this video, we're going to quickly implement one of these animation curves so that you can get an idea of how it works. We're going to do it with the left foot target, which is this one here, and we're going to use its Z direction. So we want it to basically move automatically like this in a ping pong type of action between forward by one, back by one, forward, back, constantly. All right, so... For that, we're going to need a script. I've called it Walker. It's a C-sharp script, and I have attached it to the main character, so Steve. And you can see it. it's sitting over here in the inspector. Let's open that up and put in the values that we need. First of all, it needs to know about that effector. So public transform left foot target. And we'll create our animation curve here too. Public animation curve. We'll call it the horizontal curve because it's moving the horizontal part of that sphere. Uh, in the start, we won't worry about doing anything else. But in the update, we will actually use the value of that animation curve to position the foot. So left foot target dot transform dot position equals the vector three dot forward okay which is your basically your z vector so zero zero one multiplied by the horizontal curve and we're going to evaluate that curve at time dot time so this is like digging into 
the graph on the curve based on what the time is as we go forward in time. Okay, so that's basically all you need here. So let's just save this and we're going to switch back into Unity. We want to select Steve and make sure that we set up that left foot target into our left foot target just here. So just drag and drop that onto there. Then we want to deal with this horizontal curve. Okay, so just click on it. Animation curves exist as a construct in Unity. So you can use them for all sorts of things, but this is actually showing you how to create one and how useful the values are. Okay, when we start, the curve's got nothing in it. Now we know we want to go from one position to another. What type of curve do we actually want? Do we want like a flat line? Obviously not. Do we want a straight line? Well, if we do a straight line like this, where our movement is going from like zero to one, when we ping pong it, we end up with a really kind of sharp pyramid at the top here. So in order to ping pong this, let me just show you. If you click on this little cog wheel, we can go ping pong. And then let's make this a bit bigger. And we'll zoom out. Now you can hit the F key at any time to fit everything back in. But if we zoom out, you'll see that you've got this type of curve going on. It's not really a curve, is it? What happens when you've got such a sudden change in a curve is that the animation is basically going to move to the extreme point and then bang it's going to go straight back again. There's no sort of slowing down or pausing. So animation curves tend to be like this or curved where you'll see that they actually curve around. Again we need to go back into ping pong mode to see it. Okay now with that in place we're going to press play and have a look at the effect what we get on that particular curve. So the foot is now moving or I should say that the sphere is moving and the foot is trying to keep up with it based on the inverse kinematics which it's doing. What it's not doing is actually going all the way back here where we want it to. That's because our curve doesn't go into the negative values. Now one little caveat at this point if yours isn't doing what mine is doing is that this all is kind of depending on the exact location of Steve. Now my Steve is at zero 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 in the world and that's very important for you to get the same results that I'm getting. The left foot target doesn't really matter too much where it is as long as it's near Steve. So you can see here that mine's like negative 0.177, 0.49 and 0.625. That's kind of important at this stage, as I said. Now, if we go back to Steve and we want to get this sphere to actually go back up in the negative values, let's have a look at our horizontal curve. So here's our horizontal curve. Now, what it's doing is that it's basically going from zero up to a value of positive one. So we want it to start at negative one. So we actually take it down to negative one like that. So now that it will ping pong between negative one and one. Another thing that you should consider is this bottom part here of how this curve adds on to the next one. And you can see it's very sharp, which we obviously don't want because we talked about how a nice smooth curve is going to give us a smoother transition between those states. Down here, if we go to this particular keyframe point, you'll see, and I'm not sure you can see it on my screen, but there's a little tiny dot just there. Now that's a tangent point, which allows you to modify the tangent and you can just drag it. What you want to do is kind of make it flat as possible along there. What that's going to give us when we come back and have a look at our curve is the troughs are now nice and smooth. So the leg will move forward and then it's going to ease in to stopping and then speed up as it comes out. And that's what you want to see in your animation curves. Okay, so with that in place, let's now have a little bit of a play and we will get our leg moving back and forward exactly as we want it to. Now, 
this doesn't look like walking yet but it's definitely a good start right so what I'm going to do now is set up the right foot target and I'll speed through this but let you have a look at the code at the end and then we'll go on to the next video where we'll start talking more in depth about these animation curves okay so basically the right foot we're bringing that in the target position of it then we're updating its position just like we have done with the left foot we're going to save that we're going to go back into unity go to Steve and then make sure that script knows about the right foot target bring that right foot target over here and then we're going to press play and have a quick look at what we've got and you'll see that it puts the balls in exactly the same position those spheres and both legs are kind of moving in unison which is not what we want but what we're going to get with this current setup but at least it has been activated okay i will see you in the next video when we'll start talking about alternative legs and more about these animation curves if you've enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe and you can find us at holistic3d.com take our full courses at h3dlearn.com and support us on patreon